We just got back from Blade Show West. I went in with no expectations, but I walked out with a lot of knives. So this is everything that I got at Blade Show West. Let's do the damn thing. Might as well start with the very first thing on the table here because uh, I've never owned a vault case, but we saw a vault case and they tossed one of these at me to check out. This is the vault case secure because it includes a TSA lock on it so that people can't get into your knives. You push the button, flies open, and you can unzip it. Effectively, this is just a really cool way to store your gear. It doesn't have to be knives, but it comes with these modular panels inside. You can take these off because they are all hook and loop. Everything in here is hook and loop, and you can just organize your gear however you see fit. Um, they have little attachments that don't come with it. These are part of, I guess, a pro thing, some sort of upgrade. But there's this and little pouches and pockets and strips of Velcro that you can add as well, like this little uh, zip pocket that straps to this middle panel. But you can organize this however you want. Really, really cool. This is the Vault Case Secure, and they, I think they're about 65 bucks. There's one without the TSA lock that's about 40, 45, something like that. But really cool way to organize your gear and carry it with you. So I, I, I think from the Blade Show East, the Blade Show Atlanta video, a very big presence in that was bag knives, and that's also gonna be the case here. They are uh, total animals. They're awesome. Actually, I do have to grab one thing because they wanted me to update and tell you that I, I now have a sheath for my alligator, the pickled egg knife. They brought a spare sheath for the alligator, which was a prototype at the time. Maybe it's still a prototype, but they are at least moving forward with it and have a sheath for it now. So really, really cool knife, huge, big, but now I have a safe way to hold it because that cardboard custom sheath was not exactly safe. Okay, back to all of the bag knives. We have quite a few here and I don't know all of the names, but I have a pretty good guess for most of them. All right, bag knives. Uh, I don't know which of these are prototypes and which of these are available. I do have a pretty good idea as to what is what, uh, but I don't know what's available yet. But some of this stuff is just really cool. Um, we're gonna start with these because I actually do know what these are. I had a glimpse from my Blade Show Atlanta video. It was the green handled, it was very contoured, very rounded, and it had some holes in the, the blade, I believe. They have like really, really simplified this design. So we have uh, flat scales and a full flat grind with no holes. This is, I would say, much more simplistic in design and much more my speed. I actually really like this. This caught my eye as we were walking by. You do still get that like really aggressive beg backspacer on this. You have that ball detent clip, but it has been very simplified. And this is more now along the lines of something like a uh, like an Elementum but it is from Beg, I believe. I don't know for sure, don't quote me on it, but I believe these are gonna have VG10 steel. I feel like I heard that. I don't think they're D2, but I can't be certain because uh, there's not a ton of information about them online. Uh, and this is the exact same thing with a different blade finish and a wooden handle. So this is, uh, I cannot remember what he said, but it's basically like a plywood. If you look at the edge of these scales, you can see the layers of wood and um, this one is very slightly contoured, not as much as the other that I showed before. So this one's flat. The other one was very rounded. This one is somewhere in the middle and you can see the layers of the plywood, which is really, really neat. Uh, this is definitely one of the most interesting from them. For me, the next one would be actually the slip joints. So I talked about them on a live stream recently, but the slip joints from Beg are very interesting for a number of reasons. One, there was a very big slip joint. I don't know the models. These are just the Armory series of slip joints. These are all designed by Jared Van Otterloo or JVO Knives and they're hot. They really all look great. I could not pick a favorite between these except for maybe this Hawks bill because it's so different for a slip joint. This thing looks gnarly. I really like this slip joint and I'm not a Hawks bill fan normally. I just don't like them but this thing is cool. It's unique and very very cool. Huge harpoon up here. Nice really sharp point and this thing is just going to dig into your packages because we all know that's all we use our knives for anyway that thing's cool and it's a good like fifth pocket size knife and i really like this one too because it looks <laughs> totally devoid of hardware because your your pins are steel and your your handle material your bolster is steel and you can completely hide the pins on this which is a really cool look this thing looks awesome and then the brass you have a brass slip joint with black g10 
also looks sick. Uh, these armory knives, really cool. I don't know when they're coming out, but they're nice. And they, they have kind of fine tuned that action. That's something I talked about before it being light. It feels medium now. It feels about like the Kingpin. So if you like the way that feels and the walk and talk, these are right there with it. And then finally, we have two more. I don't know the name of this one. Uh, I think this one's still a prototype, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know the name. This also is a JVO design. So Jared Van Otterloo and JV Van Deventer is a collab like collaborative design on this. This is much more like typical bag design with a lot of detail and some decorative pivot collars and weird clips. Like that is a really thick milled clip, but much more like bag style. I don't know much about this one, like I said, but this one right here is a Kirby Lambert. Uh, it's called the One and there's a bunch of different configs. It's got a thumb disc, recurve, kind of a sponto, sort of. It's not really a tanto, but just a recurve blade and real chunky, heavy. It kind of has a Chavez feel because it's just so chunky, but it's, it's a little more ergonomic because the Chavez knives are just kind of block handles, uh, but it just has that same kind of heft to it, but it is a little bit heavier than you'd think because it's steel and not titanium. This one also has uh, Jared Van Otterloo's logo on it, but it is a Kirby Lambert design. So I'm not sure what the collaboration there is. Um, those laserings are really, really dark. They did like a black lasering with a black wash blade, but they will be lighter in the, the final production. But the action on this thing is kind of ridiculous. It is a guillotine. It is what cut me there. And it's a really, really cool knife. So bag knives, they're kind of crushing it. Uh, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I really like the slip joints and this, I believe, the, the mini glimpse with this full flat grind. They're doing some cool stuff and making some moves. So keep your eye on bag knives for sure. Before we go any further, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, me. Uh, we have shirts and hats available over at the exclusive website like this one right here, the 3D Puff and Gold. There's also the Blackout hat. And then we have two different shirt styles. We have the No Safe Queens and the Quality Outlives. Once the No Safe Queen shirts are gone, they're gone. So if you want one, you better get them now because they are actually almost gone now. We also have the TPT slide with the best MEDC logo, the Topo TPT slide in two different colors. We have slingshots and we have tins available over at Exclusive. It's linked down below. Go check it out if you want to support this channel. And I thank you if you ever have bought anything or do in the future. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Now, back to the video. Let's go with Benchmade, because that was actually the first person I ran into at Blade Show was John from Benchmade. And John, just kind of walking around, like whips out this knife roll and he's like, hey, check this stuff out. This one you've probably seen. This is the Mini Adamas, the new one with a Magna Cut blade. You also have FDE uh, accents on it in your liners, thumb studs, pivot collars, and the clip standoffs and then you have marble carbon fiber handles you guys know the mini adamas it is a really really ergonomic knife it's a tough knife it is a really good knife one of my favorite bench made knives of all time and they just made it better with magna cut steel and i'm typically not a marble carbon fiber fan or at least a carbon fiber fan but this one works there's something about the pairing of fde with the marble carbon fiber that just looks really good and i'm not just saying that I actually saw this from our friend Brandon, or Everyday Minimalist, and I really wanted to grab one of these, so I managed to grab one at the show. Thank you, John, and that is the Mini Adamas. But this is a, I would imagine, never before seen bailout. This is an upcoming model. It'll happen in the next week, week and a half, maybe two weeks, but this is a different colorway. So it's a little darker than the FDE, but you have these like dark bronze accents with black aluminum handles. Um, and really the only accents you get on this are those standoffs, that backspacer or the, what do you want to call that? It's not really a full backspacer. It's just a little mini backspacer and your studs. The rest of the hardware is black. Uh, and then you have that old, older style glass breaker in the backspacer and a coated kind of textured blade. Uh, and this one is an M4 steel. So these are coming out soon. They're not out yet but you can stay tuned to Benchmade for that. Uh, Benchmade wasn't really exhibiting at Blade Show West, but they were there with a very light presence and uh, glad I got to pick these up so I can check them out. Some new stuff from Benchmade. Hmm, damn. Next, we're gonna go with Wii and Civivi. I don't think either of these are all that new. Uh, I don't know about this one. This is the Esprit from Ray Laconico and Wii Knives. Uh, I don't, I don't know much about it. Uh, what I do know is that this is basically just a frame lock version of the Sokoki. They're a little bit different, but very, very, very similar in most features. 
being that it's a thumb stud front flipper, this one's a liner lock frame lock, but they've got very similar lines, different blade shapes, but very, very similar knives. Another very similar knife would be the Rosalinda. Uh, Ray Laconico has kind of a very distinct design language and all of these are very similar. So if you like the Sakoki, you could also check out the Esprit or the, the Rosalinda, but uh, this is the one that I got a blade show. It's 20 CV, I believe. And just a really solid design that I really like. It spoke to me. I walked up to Wii, I picked up three separate knives. They all managed to be Ray Laconico design. He's got my number in terms of design, but also just continues to make bangers and has for a long time. That is the Esprit. And then we have one of the coolest things to come out of Wii Knife in a very long time. This is the budget version of the Vision R and it's called the Vision FG. It's designed by Snacks, and it's for the most part, the exact same knife, but they have made some modifications. One, for cost reduction, right? And two, just to make it a little bit better for a, a production knife. And one of the changes they made is the super lock in the Vision R, the super lock comes out just like it does in all the Snex designs with the super lock. This one, it doesn't. There were there were reasons for that. We won't get into it. And the other change is they put their, their deep carry clip on it instead of the spine clip. I don't know if there's a name for that but the Vision R has a clip that comes out of the spine and goes this way, uh, which is cool, but it poses its own problem. This is just a more budget friendly version of the Vision R and I'm here for it. Uh, this is Black Mercado Black Blade. It is Nitro V Steel. And of course you see designed by Snacks there. Awesome blade. I think they're about 70, 80 bucks. Honestly, killer for the price. Uh, absolutely love Snacks designs and these things are just super fidgety. All right, next we have some of my favorite designers who have come together for several different products. Uh, first up, we're gonna talk about this because this thing is really sick. This is the superlative Infidel, sort of. So it is the Infidel, or at least what we've been told is the Infidel. However, there's a slight issue. There's also the Benchmade Infidel, so the name of this one is subject to change. Uh, we were told that as of yesterday, it would be a different knife. We don't know what that new name is. They told us at the show, but they weren't 100% on it. So awesome, awesome, hardcore slip joint. So this one has one of the strongest pulls in a slip joint. I felt the only thing that I'd say is stronger or at least even close to it would be a Jack Wolf knife. It's somewhere in that realm. So very, very aggressive spring on it with an aggressive design. You've got a thick blade. So this is not a slicer. This is a working knife. Make no mistake. This is as tough on the spring as a Jack Wolf, but I called the Jack Wolf previously like a really hard use slip joint. I think this takes the cake there because it has that beefier blade and that that really hard spring. A Jack Wolf has the hard spring, but is much more slicey. So they definitely fill different holes. They, they market different or target different things. Really awesome, both of them. But this one is like tough, like really tough. I um, mean, that's what they were going for. You get CPM M4 steel on this. And then if you look closely, you might notice that this material on the handle is different. And that's because they worked closely with uh, current composites or whoever it was that makes the micarta for them. They worked with them to come up with their own micarta and it looks like multi-cam black. And that's why it's called multi-canvas black. It's really cool. It looks nice. It's unique, but then you also have a green g10 inlay for their logo second is surprisingly not from superlative but it's from ha uh, two thirds of superlative so this is a pena x series this one is called the paramour and it's just another awesome design but this one is actually a collaborative design between pena and javi garcia so superlative is enrique pena javi garcia and jared oser so this is just kind of two of them doing something together under Pena's X series brand. You have these really cool micarta inlays and a titanium handle in this almost invisible pivot, like captive pivot there. And then on the other side, you've got a milled clip and some relief. So the one thing I will notice or note about this knife is the relief on this. Uh, if you put this in your back pocket, it's going to catch that lip on that pocket and just shred your pocket put it in the front, it's not so bad. Um, other than that, this thing is awesome. Like really, really nice design. Kind of looked more like a superlative knife than a Pena knife when we were there. I thought it was, and then it wasn't until I opened it up after I'd walked away that I realized it's actually Pena and not superlative. You also get M4 on this. You have a nice kind of re reverse Tonto blade, really sick little front flipper. And then finally we have this, this is called the Nomad, and this is a utility knife from the 3D trio as we'll call them 
uh, and it's got a very similar lock style that you may have remembered or may have seen with Giltec. And it's just a tension bar here that pushes forward so that it locks the blade in place. It's very easy to actuate, very easy to use. And what's really cool about this, they did, they told me that they had considered putting a bottle opener on it, but decided against it. And instead they put a little spring gate in here so that you can clip this directly onto your keys or belt loop or whatever. It's just EDM'd out of this titanium, or this one is uh, Mokume, but it just clips on very easily. It's integrated. That makes this thing very unique and very, very handy. It's been years since I've talked about this brand right here, and this is Fox Knives. There's, you know, been a little bit of controversy about QC out of Fox Knives. I have personally never gotten anything bad from Fox. It's kind of a Maniago thing, but uh, I don't have any bad luck with them or bad experiences. And I walked by and I noticed that they had Surus out and I'm like, whoa, I've, I like thought about the Suru maybe a month ago and I thought about how much I missed the Suru and then I saw this and I had that I had to have this Suru. So this is a liner lock instead of a frame lock. You have micarta scales and a brass backspacer. This is through and through like quintessential Jesper Voxnez. Um, this was one of my first Vox knives from Fox. And I, it just has kind of a, a sweet, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Suru. I, I just, something about this knife just resonates with me. And I have bought and sold several and I always end up with another. And I had forgotten about it. And I was wondering what happened to the Suru, but apparently it's back and they have many different versions now. They still have the carbon fiber, they have the all aluminum one, and now they have this liner lock with micarta. This is my favorite Suru ever. Uh, still has, actually no. That says M398 steel, so that's different. I don't know the difference between M390 or M398, but this has M398. So that's interesting. Uh, the one thing I would do if I can is find a non-wire clip for this, because I will absolutely destroy that clip. But other than that, I freaking love this knife. It's one of the most ergonomic, comfortable knives ever, and this is really all the blade you need for 99% of what you need to do with a knife. So Fox Suru, I'm glad they're still making them. Like really, really glad. Anyway, this is something that caught our eye at Blade Show. Big time. This is the Volpus. Good job. I couldn't remember Volpus. I keep forgetting it. The Volpus is kind of like Fox taking on the Swiss in Victorinox because honestly, they kind of need competition. Boker's done it with the tech tool, but now Fox has entered the game and honestly, they came out swinging. Uh, this is one of the more affordable variants. It's just a slip joint, so this doesn't have additional tools. N690 blade, and they told me the range on the Vulpus is like 30 to 80 bucks. I don't know, I, I didn't follow up on that and look myself, but that's what I was told. So this would probably fall on that lower end. So this is not, not the smallest. I think there's one size smaller, I believe. So this may not be the most affordable one, but it's just a slip joint if that's what you're after. But what I think is far more important and interesting is this. So this is the higher end Vulpus and you have M390 and titanium scales. And you're getting this for under $100 in a really cool multi-tool with some serious tools. So you have a flat head and a bottle opener. And then on this side, you have a can opener and another kind of flathead. Like this can opener is going to just absolutely obliterate cans. Uh, a lot of the can openers, especially like Swiss Army or whatever, you really have to like just muscle through it. This thing is going to slice those cans open, which is, I'm, I'm excited to try it out. I haven't yet, but we got a pair of scissors in here. There is also on this side, yeah, a saw, which is, dang, that thing is, look at that. It's just grabbing my fingers. And then you have a, a straight edge blade here. All those tools in a very compact package. Um, this is considerably smaller than something similar from Swiss Army. Um, the tools are smaller, but still seem very effective. They've really kind of maximized the utility in something very small like this. And you have a range, aluminum with N690 or M390 and titanium, and all, I, I believe, gonna be under 100. So this would be, I think, the most expensive variant, and I think it's still under 100. So for that, this thing is actually really nice, especially considering you're getting a Swiss Army-like tool with much better steel and titanium. I'm honestly impressed by this. This blew our minds at first, and then we got our hands on it, and uh, I've not really had a chance to use it. We just got back, but this thing has been in my pocket, it stayed in my fifth pocket. Uh, and and I'm, I'm gonna switch it up. We're gonna do a video about that soon, but I'm, I'm switching things up. I wanna 
tear it all down and build it back up and see if I end up kind of in the same place with my EDC. But anyway, that is Fox Knives. All right. Uh, also recently I talked about this right here. This is now one of my favorite makers and I'm so glad he's getting the, the recognition he deserves. Evan Nicolaitis of Estenix Knives won two awards at this blade show. He is a perfectionist and it comes through in his work and he has a production line. And there are a lot of custom makers who make production knives and they kind of have the same vibe, but something about Essenix carries over from his customs into his production more than usual, I would say. I don't, it's, a, it's like je ne sais quoi. Like I, I don't know how to put that into words, but you feel it. You notice it when you pick up his knives. So this is his silver line. I talked about the workhorse before, and then I said I'd really like to have the, the full titanium workhorse and I walked up at Blade Show and he handed this to me. Um, this is the one I've had and carried quite a bit, and then now we have the full titanium frame lock. So this one is a Knife Joy exclusive that should be coming out soon. So they'll be out. Um, this one I don't believe will be on Knife Joy exclusive. It's the blue denim micarta with this Timascus inlay, but it doesn't really matter which one we're talking about here. The workhorse is definitely one of my favorite modern traditionals, period. It's a awesome knife and it lives up to the name workhorse. Uh, yeah, there's not much else to say about it. I've talked about them before plenty. I'm just glad that I now have a micarta and a titanium frame lock. Check them out. Snix deserves some more love, and I'm so glad he's getting it from the judges at these shows, but you guys need to check them out as well. So go check out Snix Knives. All right, this knife brand is totally new to me and maybe new to you guys. It's definitely new to the channel. This is Acaso Knives. Uh, I actually learned about them from Ricky here. He got some in the mail from them and I was like, that's actually really interesting. I like it. It feels different in the hand, especially the other one. What is the other one? Strategy. The strategy. This one is the solstice. The strategy is a D2 blade, a little more traditional style knife, but it just felt different in the hand. This one also does. There's something about these that have, there's like a quality about them that is kind of hard to explain, but this one has S35 VN blade steel and a harpoon blade flipper on bearings, really kind of CEO style. It is a liner lock, uh, but it's very slim and pokey, kind of like letter opener, almost steak knife kind of style, but a aggressive letter opener is what I'm gonna call it. I'm interested to see where they go with this. They've got a really cool aesthetic and very simple design language. So a follow-up from last blade show is this. They now have a name for it. This is called the Mink. It will have Nitro V Steel once it's all ready and finished. Um, they've made a few changes to the design, not much, but they have added a little bit of a finger guard here because before it just edge termination right into the grip on the handle and it was uh, really easy to kind of nick the corner of your finger. So they have adjusted that a little bit, but you'll have these Frag Micarta milled scales and Nitro V and it comes in a Kydex sheath with a kind of mini tech lock that'll be, it, it'll allow kind of scout carry or this vertical belt carry. Um, and it will work with all your traditional, you know, Kydex hardware. Uh, this is the mini Thunderbird. And I think one of the most interesting knives from Bastide so far, it's got a, a really cool blade shape here with a huge fuller right out of this thumb hole. Um, it is kind of this Tonto. Uh, if I were to sharpen this, I would probably just get you know, get rid of that yoke coat, but it's barely there to begin with. But you do have like this combo grind, so you have a hollow and a flat up here. And then you have what they're calling a trek lock, which is like this button lock, but uh, they explained to me how it's a little bit different, but I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the trek lock is like a button lock that is run inside of a track in the blade. I like the frag pattern handle, the blade shape. This is actually pretty cool from Vostede. This was one of the most uh, impressive things for me out of Blade Show. We made a, a short about this and a lot of people were like, well, yeah, it's got pot metal steel, but still, I think this is really impressive. This is the Revo Canyon. It is uh, not the most attractive knife, right? It's It's got a look, but what's really impressive about this knife is the price. It's 15 bucks. You're getting a button lock with thumb studs and a hollow grind for 15 bucks. Uh, I'm pretty sure they said four CR steel. So it is a very soft steel, right? It's not the best steel ever but it's $15. Uh, when your $15 knives are having specs like this, like we've definitely reached a really good place where we can be picky about a $15 knife. Um, before a $15 knife is gonna have like really truly awful steel and probably come in a three pack at Academy. Um, I'm just saying the race to the bottom is here and it's present and it's awesome. Even though this is not like 
the greatest knife ever, it's $15. So you have FRN scales, which have this kind of like faux carbon fiber appearance to them. Again, a button lock, thumb stud, hollow grind, um, and this really big belly on the blade. It's definitely a look, but $15. I think we're gonna take this one and put it through its paces and see what can happen. I mean, for 15 bucks, why not? So that is the Revo Canyon, love or hate it, $15 is impressive. The last thing in the vault case is this. The knife is not new. This is just something I threw in there. This is the Kingpin, but this from Greg Stevens Design. So at Last Blade Show, he uh, sent me home with one of his watches, and now we have some of his other gear. This is called the Cobbler's Kiss, which I think is hilarious. He has a set of coasters, which are felt and leather. I mean, he does the leather on this, uh, the flask that says drink me and then this slip. Greg does a lot of stuff. He has a lot of leather goods. He also does watches. Um, so you may recognize the logo because Greg is actually the guy that does the inlays on the Godson with the leather inlay. That's Greg. He does all sorts of things. He has for a very long time. Go check out Greg and tell him I sent you because he's a really good guy. He deserves it and he makes cool things. All right, this one technically is not from Blade Show, but it was sent before Blade Show, and then I got it home and it was here. So we're, we're gonna call it from Blade Show because it also launched in that same time frame. This is the Lulu from our good friend Ben over at NAFS, and it's his first foray into uh, fixed blades and this bushcraft style, and I think he nailed it. This knife is so cool. So one of the things you may not know about this knife is that this is raw magna cut. What that means is they've not finished this. This is just what happens as magna cut cools. So it has this kind of like orange peel design or not design, but like finish to it. But that is how it is naturally once it cools. You also have a Scandi grind on this, magna cut blade, and then micartus uh, handles, which have just a really good feel to them. Just a great grip, uh, red G10 liners. And then one of my favorite things here is the hardware that he chose. You have flat head, so you can tear this thing down without needing Torx or hex. You just need a flat head. I think he knocked this out of the park, honestly. It's, it's a really comfortable knife and a working knife. This thing will do work. Uh, it comes with this Kydex sheath. There was also a leather sheath option, Kydex belt clip. Um, you could take this off and put like an ulti clip or a, a discreet carry clip. Really sick. And I'm so happy for Ben that he's finally got this out. Uh, I've known about it for a while and it's really cool to just see it come to life. Uh, and another last point to make about this thing, uh, it's made in the USA. So 225 is the price on these. I believe they may be sold out right now, but 225 USA made white river knives is making these for Ben. And, and I'm just excited to take this thing and put it through its paces. I was actually supposed to do that in Colombia earlier this year. And I had to bail Ben went to really test this thing out in the Colombian jungle. I was supposed to be there. I had to back out. So I'm glad to finally have it and, and be able to put it through its paces. But, uh, this will be the knife I take camping in a couple of weeks, most likely. So there you go. Naf's Lulu. All right. Now we have this, this is called the bench blade from Jamie. JRW gear. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's called the bench blade. It is a blade meant for your bench. It's not meant to be carried, which is something that totally slipped my mind when I told Jamie that I'd like to check one out uh, because I was going to check it out and maybe include it in my EDC utility blade video, but uh, there's no sheath. This is how it comes. This is meant to be just left on your bench in your workshop and used as you need it. Hence the name, bench blade. Uh, utility knife, it has three screws to hold in place and that's it, right? That's it, just a, a handle and three screws to hold the blade in place. Very, very simple. Uh, I think he said the aluminum will start at like 30 bucks, give or take, and then you have brass as well if you want some really hefty, hefty handled one. But uh, that's it, JRW gear, bench blade, really cool, but a uh, little bit of an oopsie on my part. Uh, and the knife in my pocket, before I forget, is also something that I picked up at Blade Show. And this is the Flytanium Arcade, a collaboration between Flytanium and Dimco with the Shark Lock and Drop Point Blade, which I liked the idea of the Dimco 8020.5, but I got several of them and they just never clicked. It was something about the blade and the way that the knife was and looked. I just, I wasn't a huge fan. I liked the lock style, right? I liked the Snacks as well. They are different locks. I know I've said they're similar in the past. They are similar, but different. Uh, but this knife is awesome. Uh, you get a S35BM blade, you have aluminum handles, and you have swappable scales. 
And you can totally customize this knife and that's how it was built. That was how it was designed to be a totally customizable knife. Uh, but you can buy this knife and then directly from Flytanium, who specializes in scales and aftermarket parts, you can totally customize this knife. So they also tossed in some alternate hardware. So we have the gray aluminum. There's a black aluminum as well. I went with gray and then there are uh, included with your knife, there's a separate set of scales. So this one has like a black G10 with a, like a mill pattern. There's also some brass scales that I'm going to put on there and, oh, there's hardware in there. A backspacer that you can throw on this knife, buying it directly from the maker of the knife, which is a, a really neat concept and something we haven't really seen a whole lot, right? Then with NAFS does open source scales for the lander. So you can put different scales on it, but these you can like really go ham on the customization. I went with brass so it can match those thumb studs. Um, and then later they're going to have titanium scales that you can add to this. Uh, and then you can just swap everything out and totally customize your knife. Uh, but it would be really cool to see them do kind of like what Benchmade does where the customizer, so you can customize your knife before you buy it. I don't know if they're ever going to do that, but it would be really cool to see. But anyway, this is the Flytanium Arcade and one of the most unique and cool things to come out this year. All right, next up, the other knife in my pocket, uh, which you guys have heard me talk about quite a bit lately, is none other than the Big Idea Design Lookout. This is one of the 10 first made. I wanted to grab one. So this was hand ground by Mac of Six Year Knife and Tool. It is a Magna Cut blade and also made in America. You have black G10 handles, the blue titanium hardware, and this leather pocket sheath with an ulti clip on the back. So I, I wanted to grab one of these just because I wanted to support the homies because they've they've supported me for so long. So uh, I, was, I was really glad to get one of the first 10. That's It's a little special. And honestly, this thing is a killer little fixed blade. Like I really, really like this thing a lot and I'm really excited for the production ones to come out. And two more fixed blades. I think this is it from Blade Show. Uh, we'll start with this one. This is actually handed to me by the maker, Taylor Wade of Wade Knife and Tool. And he's making these out of his garage, which I think is really neat. I don't really know a whole lot about this knife. Don't know the blade steel. Um, you got linen micarta handles. He said the next change he wants to make is to flush mount this hardware. I mean, he's learning. He's only been doing this, what did he say, a year or two? Not very long. And out of his garage. So it's really cool to see something so early on in a knife maker's career. This thing locks into your hand, kind of like a CRKT minimalist, but better. Um, I've never been a huge minimalist fan, but the, he handed this to me and said, I made this for you. And I put it in my hand like this. I'm like, whoa, that's, that's sick. The thing is, I don't ever really use a knife like this. <laughs> I always use my knives kind of like this, but it's still very comfortable that way too. This thing just kind of melts into your hand. It's an odd shape, but it works. It works really well. And I will be very interested to see where he goes from here. This is a, a very thin blade stock, a very slicey blade. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to put it in my pocket. I don't yet because it doesn't have a clip on the sheath, but I've got quite a few clips now from Blade Show that I can steal from other sheaths. But that is the Sibo. Sibo. Sigo. Sigo. <laughs> Come on, Grandpa. I'm never going to remember. I'm never going to. Sigo. Sago. I'm not 100% sure but a really cool, interesting new knife from a new-ish maker. Okay, one of my favorite knives, one of my favorite designers, just a really cool guy, came out with a knife last year, maybe before, I'm not 100% sure, but my first interaction was last year, and that is the Overland from Schwartz Knives. And uh, in fact, I met him at Blade Show last year, and he was carrying it, and I thought it was a Chris Reeve knife. It was not, it was his knife, um, and that is, the larger version of this, the Overland. And he asked me later, like, how do you like it? Do you carry it every day? Like, wh what is the deal? How, how does this fit into your life? And I said, I freaking love the Overland, but it's too big to carry every day. It's a big knife. Uh, so he ended up actually making this. I'm not saying because of me, but I think he got that feedback from a lot of people. It's meant to be more of like a truck knife that you take overlanding, hence the name. This is the Overland Sport and it is much more uh, accommodating to like an EDC carry something in your pocket, which is why he includes the ulti clip on the sheath. It's a really good size. This knife in the full size is my favorite knife to use in the kitchen period. Um, and now there's one that you can carry every day in the Overland Sport. So all the same stuff just scaled down and made for a pocket carry uh, Magna cut steel. You have one of the best blade shapes for like 
everything ever in the sheep's foot and just a really ergonomic kind of, I, I love the drop from the handle down to the blade. So you can get actually really good flush cuts with this. Works really well. It's just a really good working utility blade. Um, really good for food prep, but it's also good for just everyday tasks and it takes a really good edge. Um, one of the sharpest I've ever sharpened the knife was my full size Overland. So uh, there's just something about this geometry that works exceptionally well. Uh, I, I think this is still one of my favorite knife designs. I'm happy to see it in a smaller, more pocket friendly carry size. So there you go. That is the Overland Sport from Schwartz Knives. All right, that's it. That was a lot of stuff. I'm sure that I missed something because I do every single time I make these videos. Like 30 minutes later, I find something that I shoved in a pocket somewhere and oh well. But. I tried to include everything that I got at Blade Show. Everything I did include in this video will be linked down below. If you click those links, many of them are affiliate links. You help support what we're doing here if you click them, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. But that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.